to this special blessing of the animal service. Glad you're all here with us. Had a wonderful time at Whiting and we had at least four dogs. One of them was a Yorkie, so we But uh, we are Mayflower Congregational UCC here in Sioux City. Or no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. And we are an open and affirming church that welcomes all into our house of prayer as God has welcomed us. We begin as we do each Sunday with the passing of the peace. May God's peace be with you. Take time to say hello to your neighbor, uh, send a hand wave, whatever gesture you feel is appropriate. Please stand for our call to worship. This uh, call to worship was inspired by Psalm 148, and it's from the Blessing of the Animals on the web of creation, it's on the Creation website. All dogs and cats, large and small, praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. All rabbits, hamsters, and guinea pigs, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. All goldfish, guppies, and swimming creatures, praise, praise the Lord. All robins, wrens, and singing birds, Praise the Lord. All raccoons, squirrels, and deer. Praise the Lord. All horses, cows, and sheep. Praise the Lord. All lizards, snakes, and creeping things. Praise the Lord. Every animal in the sky, the sea, and the forest. Praise, Praise the Lord. Our gathering hymn for this morning is For the Beauty of the Earth, number 28 in your New Century Hymn. Jesus' name. Amen. 
And now join me in the prayer of St. Francis, which uh, is in your bulletin in the bulletin print. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh God, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled and to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in parting that we are parted, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. You may be seated. And for the children's message, it's going to be for all ages. Uh, you can stay seated where you are. Um, for this message, I thought uh, we would take the time uh, to have our friends, pet owners, uh, introduce themselves and their animals. Um, let's see, the first one I know is Jill and Daniel. You want to go ahead and go first? And... Well, we brought Rita with us today. She's okay. very shy. Hiding in the little basket. She is a rescue cat. We rescued her from cold. Rita is related to to uh, sorry. Rita is related to my three cats that came from the same farm. So yep. same litter. Same litter, yeah. Same litter, yes. Yep. So they all are very very. She looks like normal, except normal's not quite as long. So. No, but at, at home she is not classic. You got the two girls, and I got the three boys. She no, you got the two girls and runs and oh. runs and runs and runs. Jumps up in the air and does flips to catch her little mouse. Oh, just, she is very active, very, very much a Conrad and Lucinda, I noticed that you have got a big guy there. Let me correct you before I say anything else. Uh, Lucinda, Conrad, and Lady Dayton Douglas. And okay. they are the two companions of Autumn. And the Red Autumn from the people down in Red Oak, Iowa, um, about seven years ago. And Put, I think she put some rubber duckies up on top of the box. 
Pictures of my cats, as I said, they're related to Jill and Daniel's. Uh, this is my phone. They're on my phone, which I'm putting back there for the live stream. But uh, as I said, uh, they're from the same litter. Uh, Garfield is definitely the leader of the pack. He's the, the orange one. And then there's Nermal, that looks like Rita. They're all boys. They've all been tutored. Uh, and then there's uh, Buddy. Garfield is the orange cat, it's obviously the biggest one. Um, Garfield usually is the one that needs the most attention, he howls all the time. Uh, he likes to rub his nose up against yours. Um, Buddy likes to cuddle. Uh, when he was a kitten, I had a beard, it was very adamant, so he liked to rub up against my, my beard. And then uh, Nermal was notorious for jumping on my back. Uh, he's kind of died down from that, but he's a big jumper. Uh, he can jump really high. And um, yeah, they're a blessing and wonderful to have. Yes, Ray. My grandchildren have a lizard. Oh, a lizard, okay. Oh, okay. Does a lizard, they, they get along with the lizard okay? Well, actually, Daniel helped me with that because the Garfield comic strip was a comic strip, right? And it was a cartoon, Garfield. So Garfield's nemesis, of, of, well, they always played dance in two cats, was normal. And then Buddy was normal. No. <laughs> no, they fight together. Remember, if cats make the weirdest signs, normal always likes to let you know when he's jumping on you. He'll go, and then he'll jump on you. <laughs> Yeah. And then when the other buddy meows, I always worry because he sounds like he's sighing. Sounds like a sigh. <laughs> the friends kind of meow. Solomon told his stories. Uh, part of the blessing of the animals. Um, it's probably been a while since we did this. I think 
That was actually the first time the First Congregational Hawaii had ever had a blessing in the animal service. They really enjoyed it. I know at least one other time in the past when Elaine had a service. But the main reason we bless animals uh, is because of St. Francis. And uh, his idea, his theology, had to do with creation. God created all things, and God said all things were good. And so it's our job to take care of God's creation, and that's a part of our discipleship. So it arose out of that idea of St. Francis, of uh, seeing God in all of God's creation, uh, that we should preserve this day for the blessing of all of God's creatures. Let's say a little prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our animals. Help us to always care for them and all of your creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Our first reading uh, from the Hebrew Bible is an abbreviated version of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 34. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and a great dimness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. On the first day, God created light and darkness. On the second day, God created the sky above and the waters below. On the third day, God formed the land and called it earth, and gathered the water and called it sea. God blessed the earth with vegetation and food. On the fourth day, God separated the day from the night, creating the sun, moon, and the stars. On the fifth, fifth day, God brought forth swarms of living creatures in the air, in the water, and on the land. And God bid them to be fruitful and multiply. On the sixth day, God created humankind in God's image, giving them dominion over the animals. God blessed them and bid them to be fruitful and multiply. On the seventh day, God saw that everything that God had made was very good. And God rested and blessed the seventh day and made it sacred. Here is the reading of our first lesson. Second lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 29. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour of span of your, to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon, all his glory was not clothed like one of these. This is the word of the Lord for God's people this day. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So, this morning we bless animals to remember St. Francis, to remember his life and ministry. He really is an extraordinary saint. Uh, he is one that is claimed by the Catholics, but his example has spread out to pretty much a great number of Protestant churches as well that celebrate this time in October for the blessing of animals. So his his reach is wide and vast. Everybody now has a claim to St. Francis. He is the reason why we are blessing animals today. Traditionally, it's his feast day is on October 4th, but many churches observe uh, the blessing sometime around there, sometime near or close to October 4th. 
So I want to spend a little bit of time just talking about Francis's life and who he was as a person. Francis grew up in a wealthy family, but after he had a vision in a deserted country chapel outside of Assisi, he decides to renounce all of his family's wealth, even going so far as running around through town completely naked. The bishop of Assisi has to give him his cloak to cover himself with. In this vision is where he's inspired to embrace a life of poverty as Jesus did in the Gospels. The vision uh, was this. He is in this country chapel that has been abandoned and he sees an icon of Christ crucified saying to him, Francis, Francis, go and repair my church which as you can see is falling into ruin. In Francis's day, the church had many problems. There were wars, the um, crusades were going on, and he had as many challenges, maybe even more than we have today. When he gets this group of followers, he gets this group of followers together, uh, interesting happen, thing happens for somebody who was a reformer at that time. He goes to Rome with his 11 uh, followers, and he asks Pope Innocent III for permission to found a new religious order, and the Pope gives him his blessing to do so. This was um, unusual for a reformer in those days, but Francis's ideas were so basic about just living the gospel life as Jesus did, that it was very hard for anybody to say no to that. You would have to be say no to the gospel itself. His emphasis was on very much practical living. Interesting thing about Francis was he was ordained a deacon, but was never ordained a priest. He never had the desire to be a priest. Another interesting thing about Francis and the Franciscans is Francis actually started the tradition of live nativities. The first nativity uh, was put together by Francis, and to this day, the Advent, uh, Christmas, is like the most important holiday for Franciscans. It was during uh, this time of the Crusades uh, the Muslims took control of Jerusalem. Francis went to Egypt at this time to negotiate peace with the Sultan of Egypt, who was the, the main Muslim leader. And people were not for sure how this was going to go. They thought he probably won't make it back alive. But Francis and his followers were welcomed by the Sultan. They had the conversation and one of the interesting things that came out of that is that the Franciscans were given permission to have a monastery and to be in the Holy Land before, you know, at a time when nobody else was allowed to be there. Towards the end of his life, Francis received what is called the stigmata, which uh, if you're not familiar with that in Catholic tradition, uh, it's a occurrence that happens when a beloved saint has the marks of Christ supernaturally appear on their body. <coughs> me. His main idea was all about creation. He believed that all of nature was a mirror to the divine, and the divine could be found in the neighbor and in creation itself. He called all of creation his brothers and sisters, the sun and the moon. Some stories about uh, Francis that we know about that have been passed down to us, and who knows whether they happened or not, legends, myths that uh, have been passed down on Francis. This tends to happen with uh, beloved saints, all kinds of stories get passed down about them. Is that he was preaching uh, to his disciples and they weren't paying attention. He got really upset at them. So he decided to, since they weren't paying attention, he was going to go preach to the birds. So he goes and preaches to the birds, and what happens is they notice that the birds are just 
as still and content as can be, as if the birds are just more into Francis's message than his own disciples. They're not. They're just really calm, unlike you would think birds would be at the sound of Francis's voice. They are drawn to Francis's voice. Another story uh, was about this wolf that terrorized this town, Italian town in Gibeon. This wolf was terrorizing this town and it killed several people in the town. So Francis visits Gibeo uh, and decides to go out and meet this wolf. According to the story, when the wolf sees Francis, he comes charging at the saint with his mouth open, ready to attack Francis. And Francis immediately makes the sign of the cross over him and says, Come here, brother wolf. I command you on behalf of Christ that you do no harm to me or to anyone. As soon as St. Francis did this, the fearsome wolf closed his mouth and stopped running, and once the command was given, he came over to Fran Francis's beak as a lamb and threw himself at the feet of St. Francis. Francis has a conversation with the wolf, cuts a deal with the wolf. Francis scolds Brother Wolf for destroying and killing the creatures of God. The whole town is complaining about you, Francis tells the wolf gently. But I want to make peace between you and the people. And so I promise that I will have I will give you food regularly, Brother Wolf. By the people of this town, they will give you this food so that you will no longer suffer hunger. And I want you, Brother Wolf, to promise that you will never harm any human person or animal. The wolf showed agreement by simply bowing his head. And so Francis goes to the people of this town and asks them if they will promise to provide food for the wolf regularly. They all said they would. Finally, St. Francis asked the wolf to give a guarantee in front of all the people that he will no longer inflict harm upon the people of Gibeo or its animals. The wolf lifts his right paw and places it in the hand of St. Francis. Because of this action, there was such rejoicing and wonder among all the people that they all began to cry to heaven, praising and blessing God who sent Francis to them, who through his merit had freed them from the jaws of what they felt at that time was a cruel beast. Afterwards, that same wolf lived in Gibeo for two years, and he tamely entered the houses, going from door to door, without doing any harm to anyone, without any being done to him, and he was kindly fed by the people. Finally, after two years, Brother Wolf died of old age, for which the citizens grieved very much. As we celebrate the blessing of our animals, may we embody the same vision that St. Francis had of what it means to be a disciple which is to see all of God's creation as a mirror, a window to the divine. Amen. Our hymn of response is, To you, O God, all creatures sing. Number 17 in your New Century hymn. Verses 1 through 4.
Izzy may be blessed in the name of the Creator, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May you and Bob enjoy life together and find joy with the God who created you. Amen. Of course, I'll bless mine when I get old. <laughs> Any other? Uh, oh, we got a picture of my great niece's dog, my brother's dog, and my great niece. Okay. And this is this is Pogue. 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 And uh, what's the owner's name? Uh, the owner's name is Alan. Alan, and that's his great niece, Kaylee Girl. Okay. Pogue and Alan, and uh, of course you. Pope, may you be blessed in the name of the Creator, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May you and Alan enjoy life together and find joy with the God who created you. Amen. Well, she got a new dog. Kaylee Jo got a new dog. That's the little great great granddaughter, but I don't have I don't have the name. Can we just bless Yeah, her? sure. Because she's laying together with her new dog, so I don't know. May you be blessed in the name of the Creator, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May you enjoy life together and find joy with the God who created you. Amen. She's already having joy, so. <laughs> okay. That's your new dog. Okay, sure. Sure. Now we 
move to a time where we share our joys and concerns um, together. Any, uh, uh, go ahead, Conrad. For the people of Israel and Palestine, for those who have thought it necessary to resort to violence, for all the days of the Lord. Okay. We'll say it together, Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, Linda. And the little girl is a friend of our Sunday school kids. Her name is Cece, and she came just discovered cancer, and it's a terrible thing for her, so we keep it on her. And we keep you in our prayers for healing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say it together, Lord, hear our prayers. Yeah, go ahead. I'd just like to thank the congregation for their continued prayers for my family. Yes. 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 Our pleasure. Lord, hear our prayers. Thanks be to God. Go ahead, Bob. When our local ministries asked us to pray for the Samaritan Upliftment Services in Nepal. Nepal is a small country that is between China and India. The majority of the people there are involved in small scale and subsistence agriculture. And there's discrimination because of the caste system which is more prevalent in the rural areas. And they ask that we please pray that there will be significant changes in the social and political fabric and the spirit there in the Paul society. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, go ahead. Now go to God in prayer with a few moments of silent prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day you have created. We thank you for all of creation. Lord, help us to always remember that it is our job to care for your creation. Lord, we ask that you would help us to see you through your creation. And Lord, we lift up to you this day all of the prayers that have been named and those that have not been named that are known only to you in the quietness of our hearts. Lord, we thank you for our animals and help us to always remember the values that St. Francis stood for, that we would embody them in our own lives. We lift all these things up to you in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray by boldly saying, in whatever words are comfortable for you, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
now is the time in our service when we will collect this morning's offering. And uh, we ask that you uh, give uh, from the gifts that God has blessed you with for the continued ministry of this day to me. Let us begin this morning's offering. Trustees meeting at 6 p.m. 
Thursday, October 19th is the deacons meeting at 4.30. Saturday, October 21st is our food share from 8 to 10.30. Also, the Sioux Land Discovery Choir. They'll be at Bishop Keelan Fine Arts Building, 12th Street, from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Thursday, October 26th, the Prudential Meeting at 7 p.m. And of course, we round out the month with uh, Halloween. We'll have our All Saints service uh, that last Sunday of October. Any other announcements? Yes. It's her birthday when? October 26. 26? Okay, well, we still got some. We'll have to say it. Uh, well, we still got some time to go. We're still at the beginning of October. But, okay. Unless you want to sing it now. <laughs> okay. <No. laughs> Thank you. Any other announcements? I have one announcement you may already know, um, I'm not for sure. I have accepted a, a new position, a pastoral position at Hope UCC in uh, Hiawatha, which is a suburb of uh, Cedar Rapids. I will continue to be here, here with, with you as your minister until uh, Christmas Eve. But then beginning of January 1st, I'll be beginning as a lead pastor there in uh, Hiawatha at Hope UCC. Okay. There are no other announcements. Uh, please stand if you're comfortable doing so for our sending song, All Things Bright and Beautiful, number 31 in your new century hymn.
be praised for making us so happy to have our pets and to have them to play with. We ask you, Lord, that we may be good to our pets always, so that they may be happy also. Help us always to take care of them so that they will be healthy. O oh God, your world is wonderful. May we all come into your even greater world of the kingdom of heaven, where we shall see even more wonderful things, and where we shall live and love forever. This we ask to your eternal praise and to our blessing. Amen. I leave you with these closing words. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord show his face to you and have compassion on you. May God turn his face to you and give you peace. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always.